Is there any industry that's been turned more upside down than the music business? I, I don't think so. Like, I'm old enough to remember, you probably are as well, scraping together every dollar I could find from about sixth grade onward to actually purchase music. First albums, I had a lot of Kiss records, Stick, Journey, Foreigner, etc. Uh, and then cassettes, which obviously made transportation of music a lot simpler. My first two cassette purchases were, in eighth grade, uh, Steve Miller Band Abracadabra and Men at Work. Uh, and music back then was pricey. It was expensive. I remember cassettes being on sale uh, for $11.99, and that was like a huge bargain. And $11.99 in the 80s is the equivalent of $25 today. $25, bucks. that's like months worth of a streaming uh, subscription. So $25 bucks is a lot. And, and of course, that's where the music business kind of went ar awry. The internet, you know, Napster, and then iTunes, and of course now Spotify kind of hollowed out the revenue and left the actual musicians with, with scraps. It wasn't like they were getting the majority of the $12 for a cassette either, but it was a lot better than the fractions of a penny that they get for every Spotify play today. So now, if musicians want to actually be able to make a living playing music, they got to do it on tour, and they got to tour and tour and tour and tour and tour and sell a whole bunch of t-shirts along the way. The music used to be the moneymaker, now the music is the marketing plan for tickets and merchandise. And there is a lot of music out there, more than 2 million artists on Spotify, but the top 4% of them take 95% of all the proceeds. It is a tough business, and the chances of success in the music business are not great. For every uh, Casey Musgraves out there, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of talented musicians that just can't make the numbers add up. But word of mouth can help a lot. I don't know everything. But I do know this, the more you try to fit in, the more your customers will tune out. And this week on Talk Figures, I'm going to tell you about a funk band from Nashville, Tennessee, that overcomes all of those music industry odds, dares to be different, and uses word of mouth to sell out their shows every single night. Now imagine that you're leading a band of musicians in Nashville, Tennessee. You don't play country music, far and away the most popular form of music in America today. No, you play funk music, which has a somewhat limited appeal, with occasional examples of crossovers like uh, James Brown, for example. But also imagine that there's eight dudes in your band, which uh, makes you have to split up the money um, eight different ways, uh, and, and you've got to, you know, sell t-shirts and hoodies and split that money eight ways too. Also imagine, this one's pretty crazy, that everybody in your band has a job as a session musician right there in Music City, and so you can't travel wherever you want, but you have to stay pretty close to Nashville, so most of your gigs have to be in the Southeast or the Midwest. And lastly, and this one will truly be remarkable for you, imagine that almost all of the people in the band have won Grammy Awards for their excellence in the recording studio as session musicians, and all of the identities of your band members have to remain a secret because their record label contracts prohibits them from being in another band and touring. Amidst all of these obstacles, I think there are two questions. How could you possibly succeed? And why would you even try? But this band does more than try. They absolutely slay. Their fans are incredibly loyal, and they go out of their way to recruit other fans to be part of this tribe. I always tell you on this show that competency doesn't create conversation, because it doesn't. We don't talk about good, we talk about different. That said, however, competency is still required. It's tough to succeed if you can't deliver the core promise and premise of whatever it is that you're selling. So this band, comprised of top secret Grammy award winners, is certainly competent. I'm gonna prove that to you right now. Listen to this clip. So now a quick question for you. Uh, maybe you enjoyed that a lot, maybe a little, maybe not at all. It was just a snippet, but let me ask you this. Would you go out of your way to tell somebody else about that song?
No, you wouldn't. It's not, you know, it's competent for sure, but it's not talkable. There's nothing particularly unexpected about it other than the fact that it's funk, which is a bit of a niche to begin with. So if the music is competent but not remarkable, what is the secret? How is this band so successful despite all their operational challenges? Let's find out together, shall we? I'm going to play you the same snippet, but this time I'll show you the band in action, okay? Here we go. Stay tuned. So that was a much different experience, right? What is the band's recipe for selling out shows almost every single time and becoming known as one of America's very best touring live bands? <laughs> as you can see, they've got a little bit of a costume thing going on. For 19 years, across nine studio albums, more than 1,000 live performances, this band takes the stage entirely, exclusively, and completely as mummies. The band members include Eddie Mummy, Mummy Cass, and the High Priest of Death. They are so committed to this differentiator that they also only do media interviews when in character. Truly, nobody knows who they really are. It really is a, a closely held secret. Remember, competency doesn't create conversations. You need to have it. That's just table stakes, but it doesn't build word of mouth. I don't know everything, but I do know this. If you want your fans to talk about you, You've got to give them something to talk about. Something they don't expect. Something like a killer funk band from Nashville, Tennessee that Sim say is the best live band in America. They're called Here Come the Mummies. Check them out. Next week on Talk Triggers, you'll learn about a hotel that's been giving their guests something to chew on and talk about for 30 years straight. Talk about a word of mouth strategy that succeeds over the long haul. Wow. To never miss one of these episodes, subscribe right now on YouTube. You can get this show as a podcast as well. Just go where you get your audio and search Talk Triggers. And you can find every show on the YouTube channel at TalkTriggersShow.com. I'm Jay Bear. See you next week.